Thanks for having me, Creative Mornings. This is really exciting. This is an event that um, I've actually never attended before. I, I've lived in London for the past four and a half years, just recently moved to Spain. But in London, it sells out like instantly. You can't get tickets unless you click on that email the second it goes out. Um, and this event sold out as well. So that's pretty exciting. So Wellington, just as popular as London. <laughs> um, today, I'm here to talk to you about self-promotion. And I'm going to start by just telling you a little bit about myself, because like Ryan said, I'll do the introduction. So I am a lead marketing designer at ConvertKit. I basically do web design um, and lead all of the brand efforts there. Uh, I work remotely. A whole company is remote. So there's no head office anywhere. And like I said, right now I live in Spain. But outside of work, I do a bunch of other stuff. The main one, I would say, is my YouTube channel. So I talk about design on YouTube. I share just life as a designer, um, talk about my process, share my work, that sort of thing, have a podcast. But I'm not really here today to talk about me. I'm here to talk about you. Uh, we're here to talk about how to help you promote yourselves. And I'm going to guess that you came along to this, you saw the topic, and you signed up to come along maybe for one of these reasons. Maybe you're wanting to win more clients for your freelance business, or maybe get it off the ground. Maybe you want to land a great job. You're not happy with where you are. You've got your sights on something bigger. Self-promotion is going to help with that. Maybe you just want to build your reputation in the industry. You want to become known as a person in your creative field, which is highly respectable. For all of these things, you have to learn to promote yourself. And I know that that is really hard for us Kiwis, right? We have our tall poppy syndrome that's affecting us all the time. And self-promotion, I think, has a bad rap because a lot of people think of it like this. They think of it as like shouting into the abyss, talking about yourselves loudly to anyone who will listen. Um, this is not what we're going to talk about today. I would, I would say the online equivalent of this, since I know we're not literally going around with megaphones, <laughs> is maybe just tweeting about yourself constantly, sharing links to your work with never engaging with anyone else or having conversations online. Just, I don't know, anyone can open up one of those tweet scheduling apps and schedule a tweet about your work to go out every hour if you want. That's probably not going to get you that much work. So. Self-promotion, I think, is not really about fame and about shouting about yourself. It's about building a reputation in a niche. And so the aim of this workshop, this talk today, is to encourage you to do a more natural and less shouty type of self-promotion. And uh, I'm a firm believer in this because of how much value I personally have gotten out of it in my career, uh, but of doing it the right way. Um, I know I said that this is going to be about you, but let's just come back to me for a second. I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story. Um, Self-promotion is the reason that I'm here right now talking to you. It's the reason that I have this job that I love, where I get to do meaningful work for an audience I feel a great connection with, with people on, on the team in the company who I just absolutely love working alongside. And it's the reason why I get to live this ideal life of mine working remotely. I travel all around the world and can keep working, not having to take up much vacation days, which is pretty awesome. And I got here because of self-promotion. So here's how that happened. Back in 2016, I was invited to speak at the Sean Wes conference. Sean Wes is a creator who has a podcast, he has an online community. He was putting on a conference um, for, for creative types and he invited me to speak about consistency, creating with consistency. Because at this stage, I'd run a YouTube channel for about three years and had published a video, at least one video, every single week without skipping a week. Um, so I was there talking about how to create consistent content. Someone else who was also at this conference was this guy. This is Nathan Barry, and he is the CEO of ConvertKit. So that's a spoiler alert right there. Um, he did a great talk. Um, I hadn't really heard of him before. I was like, oh, who's this like startup founder guy? He's got a blog, and he writes books and things. This is pretty cool. After the conference, he asked myself and a friend of mine if we'd like to go and get lunch together. And I thought, great, this, he seems pretty cool. This guy wants to go like, meet with us, chat with us more. Let's do it. We sat in this pizza place for a few hours. And um, partway through the conversation, he says, so Charlie, have you ever considered working remotely for an email marketing software company? <laughs> and I was like, that's very specific. <laughs> Odd question. And my friend was like, I'm pretty sure he's offering you a job. Uh, and he was. So we met for breakfast the next day. It's my like official interview. and. Um, a month later, I decided to join the team. So now I get to work with these amazing people. And it was putting myself out there that got me into this position. Um, without promoting my content that I was creating on YouTube, without trying to build my reputation in the industry, Nathan would never have heard of me. I probably would never have heard of ConvertKit. And I wouldn't be where I am today. But putting myself out there and doing the self-promotion, it hasn't just helped me. It's also helped other people. 
I've built an audience of people who say amazing things like this that I've helped them get to where they are today, which is just super meaningful. And as someone who dreamed of being a teacher when they were a kid, you know, this is my way of, of doing that, of educating in a way. I also get to work with brands like Webflow and Squarespace and Adobe, um, as well as getting comments from amazing people like this. And it's all from self-promotion. So can we all agree that it's not a bad thing, all right? Us Kiwis, we don't need to be afraid of it. Cool? Cool. So like I said, self-promotion is not about fame. I'm not here to help you get famous. So I'm sorry if that's why you came along. It might be a byproduct, but who knows? Uh, I'm here to help you build your reputation. So this um, talk that I'm doing today was actually originally created as a workshop where I had like a bunch of tables around and we had like, you know, a few hours where people could um, work in groups. I've made available for you the worksheet that we used in that workshop. You can download it from this link, um, take a picture of the screen or whatever, like get it later and do it on your lunch break or something like that. But this is a framework that will walk you through the theory that I'm talking about today. This will give you the activity to like put it into action, if that makes sense. Uh, so it'll be a good thing to go through on your lunch break or something like that. But yeah, let's get into it. So self-promotion is pretty simple, really. There's two steps. First, you've got to get good at something. Then you've got to tell people about it. And I think a lot of you here today are probably already good at something, or you already know what it is you want to get better at. So step one done. Now we've just got to learn to tell people about it. So this framework, this plan we're going to talk through today, and I'm going to um, give you some insight on, is to get clarity to evaluate where you're at right now, and then put together an action plan for how to actually achieve it. So back to this. Why are you here today? I want to bring this up again because I really do want you to have this in mind as we're talking throughout the rest of this talk, because this is your driver, right? This is why you're here. This is what you want to get out of this. Um, you're not here just to listen to me talk for 45 minutes or an hour, like you're here because you want to change something about your life, right? You want to improve in some way. So keep that in the back of your mind. Um, this will be the first step on your worksheet as well when you come back to that, to write that down and just make sure that you know why you're doing this. What are you aiming for? The next thing that you need to know is what you want to be known for. And I want to start here because this gives us context for everything that we're going to be doing. <coughs> Um, what you want to be known for is what you want to try and convey through all of your various channels online, your portfolio, your meetings that you have with people in person. This is what you need to nail down and really know how to communicate. So I've split this into two parts, what you want to be known for. First is your skills. This is one side of it. And this is your like creative vertical that you're in. Um, how many people here today are designers? Okay, good few. That's quite a lot of designers actually. What about marketers? A couple, okay. Um, illustrators, developers. Uh, what other types of creative people have we got here? Someone shout something out if I haven't said yours already. Writer. Writer, great. Yeah, okay, cool. So we've got all these different creative niches, but I want you to niche down even further than that. What type of writing do you do? What type of design do you do? What type of illustration do you focus on? Within these niches, you've got to specialize because these categories are very broad, right? Um, I am a web designer. I am not the person to come to if you want branding. I'm probably not the person to come to if you want a big mural done. Like all of that is design, but it's not the type of design that I do because I specialize. We're human, right? We have a finite amount of time that we can learn and apply to get really freaking good at something. I don't know if I can swear a creative morning, so I'll say that. <laughs> It'd be great to learn everything, but um, if you do put your efforts into like specializing across the board and trying to be good at all things, you're going to end up with something kind of like this, right? Where you're just kind of okay at most skills. And you can swap out this bottom layer of these skills here for whatever is relevant to your uh, profession. Instead, what I want you to do is dive deep on one skill, one main thing that you want to focus on and that you want to be known for. So you end up with something more like this. So in this scenario, I'm still working on all of these skills, right? I'm just investing in different levels of them. Um, and doing this means that you can sort of build up your own version of even being in these niches, like um, in this example here, which is not really me, by the way, it's just made up. But 
This is a UI UX designer who also has really strong illustration skills, which is going to be obviously very different from a UX designer who also invests a lot in research and, and data. Those are different skill sets, different niches that you can go after, and different ways you can specialize and stand out amongst the crowd. It's going to mean that you play favorites with your skill sets, which I know is hard because you, know, you want to try everything, you want to be good at everything. but you're going to have to pick. And honestly, I found it really freeing to embrace this and accept it and to say, oh, I'm, I don't do logo design. Like, as a designer coming up in university, it felt like I had to do that if I was going to be a designer, right? But you don't. You can pick, you can specialize, and you can just let go of all the things that you don't want to be your thing. Starting out, I think it is good to generalize and try, to try a few different things. But um, yeah, the more you get into your field, the better it is to start picking an avenue to go down. You can change it as you go, so don't worry if you pick a path and you decide it's not right for you. You can switch tracks, and those other things that you invested in earlier are still going to help out um, in terms of your other skill. So also, choosing this, choosing what skill to focus on, doesn't mean that you stop doing every other piece of work. doesn't mean you can never do any logo design if you've said publicly that you're a web designer. Um, it's just about what you put out there and the type of work that you're wanting to attract. So that's skills. And the second side of this, of what we want to be known for, that we have to decide, write down, get it on paper, is our character. What character attributes are important to us? How do we want people to see us? And how do we want people to describe us? These things here could be the make or break reason why you land a job. It's not all about the work. Your portfolio and your previous experience is kind of what gets you in the door. But these are the things that can really nail it down, that can land you that client, that can get you that job. They can help you stand out from other people. Um, and anyone who's seen hired other creators before has seen this in action. You know, when you've got three equally good people, technically, you're going to pick the one who you feel is going to be the best fit for your team, who's going to um, work the hardest, who's going to be the most fun to work with, whatever is important to you in the hiring process. We all want to work with really interesting, passionate people. And everyone, I think, is interesting. Everyone is passionate about something. It's just whether or not you put it out there, right? And whether or not you make that known to the people who you're trying to attract. Um, in the worksheet that I, I'll put a uh, URL on screen at the end as well, if you didn't get that first one, but there's a bunch more like suggestions and examples of these types of character attributes that you can start thinking about and figuring out what it is you want to be known for. Because uh, again, with this, just like with the skills, although we would all love to be described probably as all of these great things, we can't put our efforts into going after every single one of them. We want to pick a couple that we really want to focus on and be known for. So what I love about this question of asking what you want to be known for and taking the time to really figure this out is that it can be aspirational, if you like. Perhaps there is a skill that you haven't learned yet that you really want to be a part of what you have to offer. Or maybe there's a character trait that you would love people to describe you as, but perhaps it's not something that you feel like you're embodying just yet, right? The good thing is that we can always work on ourselves as humans, and we can improve, and we can make these things true if we want them to be. Promoting yourself online isn't really about only showing the good bits, but um, it's about improving ourselves as people. So for example, no one wants to hire a negative person, right? We can all be negative at times. But negativity is not what you want to put out there into the universe. And whenever you use any sort of social media, internet, you are putting stuff out there onto the web for people to find, for people to see, for people to make judgments about. So just be mindful of that and ask yourself, do I want to be known as the type of person who says this thing? Or do I want to be known as a positive, like kind, caring person instead? So it's just something to keep in mind. Um, and an example here of uh, aspirational character trait is one that I really wanted to be known as, but I didn't feel I was yet. I wanted to be known as someone who was open and vulnerable. Um, my personality type, I'm, I'm quite closed off. I'm like slow to trust, I suppose, and like, you know, keep my, my close circle close and can kind of be um, a little bit held back with, with other people. And that's not something that I liked about myself. I'm quite a deep thinker and I wanted to share that more with, with the world and have that be that something other people saw, not just myself and the people who are close to me. So um, that's something I started working on. I started 
getting real in the vlogs that I put on YouTube, um, started opening up about things, being more intentional with conversations that I had with people, asking them harder questions and like trying to dig into things that maybe felt a bit uncomfortable at first, but that was where I wanted to get to. So I knew I had to do the work to get there. Um, and to start out with, it was work. It didn't feel completely natural, but over time it just becomes more natural. Uh, just like public speaking, I was terrible at this to start with and now I absolutely love getting up in front of people like you and talking about things. So there's always something we can work on. Um, and if there's something you want to be known for, you can make it happen. So don't worry if there's a character trait that you would love people to describe you as, but perhaps you don't feel like they could right now. We can work on it. In your worksheet, um, you're going to take that skill and those characteristics and you're going to put together a mission statement like this. This is something to keep in mind. So mine, for example, might say something like, I want to be known as a marketing designer who is open and helpful and driven to get results for the business. Those are the things that I want to project and put out there so that when I'm applying for jobs, people know that that's the type of designer I am and that that's the type of um, abilities and like, addition they're going to get to their team if they hire me. So now that we have that sorted, let's just talk for a second about the law of attraction. Um, what are you putting out there into the world at the moment? Maybe as I had those uh, character traits, that skill set thing up on screen, you started thinking about what am I doing, what do I want to be, and what am I putting out there? The law of attraction is, can be understood that like attracts like. So that means that whether we realize it or not, we are responsible for bringing both the positive and negative influences into our life. And a key part of the law of attraction is understanding that where you place your focus can have a big impact on what happens to you. So I want to show you this in action by introducing you to a few people. This first one you might have seen before because she spoke at Creative Mornings, uh, I think, around this time last year. This is Femme. She is my podcast co-host. We have Design Life, a podcast together. She also writes a newsletter about design. Um, she was working in marketing at a tech company and she decided that she wanted to get into product design. Um, so she started writing about it. She started writing about her design process, about her learnings, um, as well as obviously putting some things up on her portfolio. Um, one day, someone from the Uber design team in Amsterdam replied to one of her newsletters that she was sending out uh, and basically said that they would be interested in hiring her for a job, which you'd like to apply. Um, she was interviewing there as well as at a few other tech companies. She kind of like had her pick because she had built up this reputation as a product designer without even having product design experience because she'd been putting it out there into the world, writing about it, sharing her knowledge. And now she works at Uber. She got the job there. Um, she just moved to Canada with them recently as well and is on the Uber Eats team. So that's really awesome that her content was able to help her overcome that gap in her experience to get this job. Another person who's done this really well is Brent. Um, he's a graphic designer and he started getting a few clients in the music industry who were asking him to design t-shirt graphics and those clients started referring some other clients because Brent is just a really talented fast worker when it comes to making t-shirt designs. He decided to go all in on this niche and he changed his website to like only show his t-shirt design work and that's what he talked about. He made um, mock-up t-shirt templates and sold them in a creative market store as well. He went all in on t-shirt design. Uh, now that's what he's known for. He is slammed constantly throughout the year designing for like probably every band that you've heard of. Um, he's designing t-shirts. So committing to that niche and becoming known for it helped Brent build this freelance business. So what about you? Are you putting your best foot forward right now? Are you embodying those values that you want to be portraying to the world? What kind of work are you attracting with your current portfolio? Do you find that people are always asking you to do something that you're not really interested in doing? Um, what impression are you giving to other people through your online presence, through the way you use Instagram, the way you use Twitter, the way you interact here in person at events like Creative Mornings? What I want you to do is when you get home or on your lunch break today is take a look at your portfolio and at your social media to see how it answers this. Um, and here's how you're going to do that. You're going to have to talk to a stranger, a relative stranger, someone who doesn't know you very well. I want you to give them a link to your work, on, see your work online, a link to see your social media profiles, your online presence, whatever you're interested in getting a sense of how it's working right now. Um, and you're going to ask them questions like this. So this is why it's important that it's someone who doesn't know you very well already. What type of work do you assume I do based on these things? 
What type of clients do you think I'd worked on based on these things? How would you describe me to someone else based on seeing these things? This can be a really challenging activity to go through because you might get some results that are quite surprising and not what you expected. Um, but you need to do this because this sets a baseline for where you're going to improve from, right? You need to know what you're putting out there right now so that you can figure out what you need to change in order to get to where you want to go. So uh, maybe you can do this here at Creative Mornings um, afterwards. Find a self-promotion buddy. You're going to commit to working together, being accountability partners in this, where you can send each other your links and give each other the feedback. Um, it's just going to be a really useful perspective for you. Uh, and I've had people who have been in workshops with this in the past be really surprised by what other people gathered from, from their presence online. Um, yeah, people can give constructive critique. You know, no one's going to be mean. So don't be afraid to do this. We need to do this baseline because we need to know what actions you have to put in place, right? So let's talk about um, what actions you can put in place once you figure out what work you have to do here. I think, honestly, the best way you can increase your reputation and uh, change how people perceive you is through content that you create online. I think creating content is really purposeful. It's much more purposeful than sharing a photo of your weekend or that sort of thing. Um, you're putting time and effort into it, into sharing something. Um, and I'm sure that all of us here at some stage have shared a Medium post, shared a YouTube video with a friend that you watched and then you know enjoyed it and thought they'd get use out of it. Creating content is really good for getting your name out there because you're not just talking about yourself when you create content. You're providing value to the world. And when you provide genuine value, that reflects very well on you. When I say make content, you might hear me standing up here. I've been making YouTube videos for six years now. I'm not saying you have to do that. You don't have to even commit to making content regularly. You just need to put some things out there. Just start. Every now and then, write a thing, make a video, make a podcast if you want to. Like Whatever type of content you feel like you want to create, put it out there. Uh, and you might fall in love with it and start doing it regularly. But the more you can put out, the better it's going to reflect on you. We all know that employee, employers Google us, right, usually before they hire us. So if you have some really great, useful pieces of content attached to your name, that's going to be awesome. Personally, I think that everyone should be making at least a few pieces of content every year uh, and putting it online for the community. I think of it as like our duty as a digital citizen. So um, when I say this, you might be thinking now, OK, yeah, create content, great. But like, what should I write about? What should I talk about? I don't have anything to say. I'm not important. I don't know. People always seem to, seem to think this. And I'm like, you're all very interesting. You all have all these things about your lives and your process that are going to be valuable to share. And um, if you're worrying about feeling too self-involved, I suppose, when it comes to creating content, then this is a great place to start. Teach everything you know. This is one of our mottos at ConvertKit, and it's something that I absolutely love and kind of apply to my life in general now. Um, what do you know that could help people? You don't have to be an expert. You don't have to be the best thing at the thing that you do in order to teach people, in order to help them. Um, start thinking about what parts of your process might be useful for other people to learn. I made a video once where I did a very basic 101 introduction to using Sketch, the design tool, because um, when I was getting started and moving over from Photoshop back in the day, I found it really hard to wrap my head around this new software. And I was like, ah, where do I start? There's so many buttons to click. There's so many things going on. And I had a workmate walk me through it in a way that was really useful. So I thought, OK, I've been using this tool a few years now. I'm going to pass this on. I'm going to make a video walking people through the same way he did for me. Uh, and that video was super popular. People have found it really useful just in, in getting to know Sketch. So think about something that you've learned maybe recently that you could pass on to other people and that could help you. And all of these things, I want you to think of them. Remember, go back to your mission from a frame of what do you want to be known as. So um, if your goal is to be known as a really great illustrator, perhaps sharing you making sourdough bread is not the best skill to like get to that. It's useful, no doubt, but it's not really going to help you increase your reputation in, in that particular field. All right, so you're going to teach things. You're going to teach people things. And I know that literally every single person here has something they can teach to another person, at least one thing. But like, once you start, more will come out of the woodwork, I promise, because people will ask you questions. And you'll think, oh, great, well, now I can make a piece of content around that. Another way to get yourself out there and get known and increasing your reputation is to make great projects. 
Maybe you've got an idea in mind for a side project, something you want to work on that your day job isn't giving you, that you're not able to do through your student work, whatever it is. Make that project yourself. Take the initiative. Just that step of taking the initiative is a really good look um, when it comes to getting employed at a company. I managed to land a remote job without having a single bit of remote experience purely because of my side projects. Um, the company had seen that I could obviously demonstrate I was self-driven and motivated and could work successfully alone because I'd been running this like, YouTube channel for years, right, of, of producing all the content myself. So they trusted that I'd be good at remote work because of that. So side projects can be really great at projecting those sorts of values and skills about yourself. And I'm a big believer in this because I think it can help you progress and learn more in that main skill that you want to have. Um, they're often the cool little things that get shared online as well, just like content can go viral. Side projects are things that can go viral when you create a cool tool. Or maybe you just have a cool looking website for this side project that you've made. Um, keep that in mind. They're, they're great things to have. An example here is the Space Design Challenge. Have a lot of you here heard of Dan Petty? He's a freelance designer who runs an event series called Epic Currents, and he does a lot for the community. Um, he's built up a reputation through being an online presence, essentially. And he ran this challenge, I think it was maybe two years ago now, uh, where he set a design brief um, and he got people to participate in it. So he said, OK, this is the challenge. We've got this fake space design company. You've got to create either a website or an app, or I think it was a brand as well. And he had like the parameters set out. Um, and literally, thousands of people joined in on this thing. They were all posting their work on Dribbble, sharing it. So not only did Dan create the side project, he also gave other people the chance to have a side project too. And it wasn't just Dan who like succeeded based off running this challenge. It really did help to increase his reputation, but a lot of the participants, participants as well got a lot out of it. There was someone like Martha who got a job at Envision from taking part in the challenge. She got to test out some UI animation skills, and that's what introduced her to like playing around with this new skill and seeing if she wanted to make it her career path, and now she gets to work in it, all because she decided to create this project and work on it on the side of her day job. So I know it takes time, but side projects are worth it. They do take much more time than writing up a blog post or like filming a video, but they can have a much bigger impact once you do invest in them. So if anyone sitting here has been like, oh, I've got this idea in my mind, I don't know if I should do it or not, please take this as your sign to do it, okay? Like, you're gonna go home tonight and you're gonna start working on it. Um, now, I just wanna apologize quickly if anyone here came along to this talk expecting me to talk about these things, about SEO, about outreach, about like going viral on the internet. I'm afraid that um, self-promotion is not, there's no magic wand you can wave in order to make this happen. There's no secret hack you can have in order to, to reach, increase your reputation. It is about putting in the work. And um, you should learn about these things. These are great. They can help your work spread even further, which is awesome. Uh, you should make pop content on popular topics that are trending because that's more chance of it getting shared, more chance of your name getting out there. Those things are smart to think about. But these things are not the be all and end all. They're not going to be the thing that can help you succeed alone. Think about a favorite creative that you follow online or someone who, if you had a project with their skill set, you would want to hire them. Are they that person that comes to your mind because they were the top ranked search result on Google? Probably not. They're a person that you've had in the back of your mind that you've been following for a while so that when someone thinks, oh, um, I, need a, I need a brand designer, I need a new logo. My mind immediately goes to Holly, who was in the audience today, because she has promoted herself as a brand designer, as someone who does great at designing logos. And so whenever someone says that to me, I instantly recommend Holly. I don't go and Google brand designer and see who comes up first. Holly's built her reputation, and she's who I'm going to recommend. Another thing about self-promotion is that it's not all about you. I know I said it was at the start, but it's also about building up others that you believe in. Unless, of course, uh, you were thinking of this as your mission statement. In that case, sure, go ahead and make it all about you. Why not? <laughs> Everyone has that person they follow online, right, who is always sharing really good stuff and giving it a good advice. You know, they're like a good follow. If you're going to do a follow Friday, if that's still a thing, you're going to recommend them. It's nice to be known for that as well, right? So you don't even have to create your own content in order to be known as this and to increase your reputation. Self-promotion is really about curating your work 
and your online presence. It's, it's about being yourself. You're not trying to invent a new persona here. You're trying to be you, but like an elevated version of you. Um, I'm going to say the best version, but it's not necessarily the highlight reel. You can still be real and share the hard things as well. You're building a reputation in a niche, and um, you're increasing your confidence in it too. So what do you want me to be known for? What changes do you need to make to your portfolio now after thinking through all this, or changes to what you're putting out there online through your social media? What content are you going to start creating next? Like, Has something come to mind already that you think, yes, that's the thing that I need to teach? Or what side project do you want to create? Go through the worksheet that I'll put up a link to in a second, and um, I promise you it's a good idea to, to actually take the time to do it. I've had other people get a lot of value from this. Um, this is from a uh, person, Alex, who attended the first version of this talk that I did in Epicurrence, where he said that during my workshop was the first time he really figured out and put it in writing what he wanted to be known as. And it's what he thinks about now. It's what he comes back to and refers to. So this mission statement that you're going to create for yourself of what skills you want to be known for, what characteristics. Um, it's going to be there for you to refer to and to help you use it as, as a decision-making framework as well throughout your career and when you're deciding what to put out there online. So here's where you can go get the worksheet, download it, go through it, help each other, and um, yeah, increase your reputation. Thanks, everyone.